क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी फाइव इन विच देर इज अटिक इक्वेशन गिवन पी एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस क्यू एक्स प्लस आर इक्वल्स टू जीरो रूट्स आर एल्फा एंड पीटा एंड द गिवन दैट कोफिशंस पी क्यू एंड आर आर इन ए पी एंड एज वेल वन बाय एल्फा प्लस वन बाय बीटा इज इक्वल टू फोर and we have to find the value of mod of alpha minus beta now by the given relation 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta is equals to 4 alpha plus beta by alpha beta is equals to 4 and if we put the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta from the equation ha huh, there will be this will be equals to minus of q by r because of alpha plus beta is equals to minus q by p and alpha beta is equals to r by p now from this we can get the value of q in terms of r which is equals to minus 4r let this is 1 now from the second relation pqr in ap to q will be equals to p plus r and if we replace the value of q in this equation will get p is equals to minus of 9r let this be 2 now we have to find the value of mod of alpha minus beta which is equals to square root of alpha plus beta whole square minus 4 alpha beta now again replace the values of alpha plus beta and alpha beta from the equation we'll get the relation q square minus 4 pr by p square now replace the value of q and p in terms of r from equation 1 and 2 in this we will get the relation is 9 of r square so 16 of r square plus 36 of r square by 81 r square now r square will get cancel out and the uh, resultant uh, number will be equals to 2 square root of 13 by 9 which is the option 4 in the question so answer is option 4 2 square root of 13 by 9 question is question number 46 which actually based on the probability and let the what is the given data us in this question the first one is p of a union b bar is equals to 1 by 6 means the probability of complement of a union b is equals to 1 by 6 this implies clearly p of a union b will be equals to 1 minus 1 by 6 which is equals to 5 by 6 the second one is p of a bar is equals to 1 by 4 this again means that the probability of event a is equals to 1 minus 1 by 4 which is equals to 3 by 4 and the last one uh, that is p of a intersection b probability of a intersection b is equals to 1 by 4 now we know that p of a union b probability of events a union b will be equals to p of a plus p of b minus p of a intersection b now replace uh, the value of p of a p of a union b p of a intersection b by the above three equations we'll get that uh, p of a union b is equals to 5 by 6 p of a is equals to 3 by 4 p of b and minus p of a intersection b which is equals to 1 by 4 this will give us the probability of event b means p of b is equals to p of b is equals to 1 by 3 now we know that p of b is not equals to p of a it means events a and b are not equally likely as well because of p of a into p of b is equals to 3 by 4 into 1 by 3 which is equals to 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 actually equals to p of a intersection b and this implies that the events are as well uh, independent events so that's why 
uh, A and B events are uh, independent as well as not equally likely. So this is the option three in the question. So answer will be three. The events A and B are independent and not equally likely. Let us see question number 47. In question number 47, we are given two differentiable functions and the data is given as f0 is equal to 2, f1 is equal to 6, g0 is equal to 0 and g1 is equal to 2. So we consider the function fx minus 2gx to be equal to hx. Let us read the value of this function at h0. So clearly at h0, f0 is 2 and g0 is 0, therefore h0 is 2. If we read the value of the function at 1, f1 is 6 and g1 is 2, so that makes it 4, 6 minus 4 is 2. So obviously h0 is equal to h1. Since fx and gx are given to be differentiable function, therefore obviously hx is equal to, hx is also a derivable function. Therefore, we can apply rules theorem in hx and by rules in hx on close 0 to 1, h dash c is equal to 0, which implies f dash c equals to 2 times of g dash c. Now, if you look at the option, option number 4 is the correct option. Option number 4. In question number 48, we are given the differential equation as dp by dt. If I rearrange and write the differential equation as this, dp by dt plus minus half into p equal to minus 200. And this differential equation gives the population of the rabbits at some time t. So we need to solve this to get the population function. As you can see, this is a linear function and the integrating factor is e to the power minus t by 2. So if we solve it, we get p into e to the power minus t by 2 equal to integral of minus 200 into e to the power minus t by 2 plus a constant of integration. So if we integrate it, p into e to the power minus t by 2 is equal to, it will be e to the power minus t by 2. With this, we will have 400 plus c. So to find c we have to use the initial condition. So at t equal to 0 the population is given to be 100. So put t equal to 0 we get p, uh, p as 100. Here you have 400 plus c which obviously implies c is equal to minus 300. So the function becomes p into e to the power minus t by 2 equals to 400 e to the power minus t by 2 minus 300. So if I multiply by e to the power minus t by 2, p equals to 400 minus 300 into e to the power t by 2. This becomes the population function. So if you look at the option carefully, the option that matches is option number 1. So correct option is option 1. In question number 49, we are given a circle whose center is at 1 comma 1 and radius is also 1. Therefore, the circle is definitely going to touch the coordinate axis. Then we are told that there is another circle whose center is at some point 0 comma y. I assume 0 comma y to be 0 comma t and it is also given that the circle is passing through origin. In such case, the circle is going to look like this and the circle is going to touch this particular circle also. So, the circle is something like this and the center I am calling 0 comma y instead I am calling it to be 0 comma t this is 1 comma 1 obviously the circles are externally touching circles so I count this distance and this is under root of 1 plus t minus 1 whole squared which is equal to the sum of the radii so its radius is obviously t so t plus 1 square we get 1 plus t minus 1 whole square equal to t plus 1 so 1 equals to 4t, t plus 1 whole square, so it's 4t and t is equal to 1 by 4. So uh, radius of circle t it is asking, so obviously option number 4th is correct. In question number 50, 
two inequalities are given representing the regions. One is x square plus y square less than equal to one, and other one is y square less than equal to one minus x. So this region represents the interior of the circle, whose center is obviously at the origin, and radius is one. This parabola has the vertex at one comma zero, and it passes through these two points. So it looks like this. And according to the region that is being told to us, this particular region's area has to be found out. Now, to find out this area across this diameter, this entire area is already known to us to be the half of the circle. So we don't have to calculate this. We just have to calculate this much of the area, and we'll double it to get the area bounded by y-axis and parabola, and we'll add it to the half circle's area. so we take this kind of a strip for the parabola and we integrate it in 0 to 1 so it is basically 0 to 1 x dy for the parabola and double of this and x is equal to 1 minus y square therefore this is 2 times 0 to 1 1 minus y square dy so that makes it 2 Into this is y, so one minus y cube by three, so this is one by three, so that makes it two by three is four by three, and the half circle's area has to be added also. So the required area is going to be pi by two plus four by three. So if you look at the option, option number one is the appropriate option. This is the correct answer.